Hello everyone, today I'll show you the things I do to keep my projects organized and in a very efficient way. I'll explain how to deal with window management, or rather how to mostly avoid the need to manage windows, since this is a big annoyance for the majority of users coming to FL from most other DAWs. I'll then show you some keyboard tricks and keyboard shortcuts to boost your productivity by a lot. And you'll see that all the info in this video should make a big difference in allowing you to put down your ideas quicker and basically never get lost in your projects. So first off, regarding window management, you can organize your windows in a way that you will almost never need to manage them, which means no more opening, closing or moving stuff all the time. Even though the keyboard F functions are useful for speeding this up, I basically never use them because I just don't need to. So having all your windows available right in front of you is a big time saver. Now, as you can probably see with the aspect ratio of this video, I do have an ultra wide monitor, which definitely helps. But if you have two monitors, you can, for instance, put the playlist on one and the step sequencer and mixer on another, a bit like I've done here. That said, even a single 16 by nine screen works okay, and it will still save you a ton of navigation time. In my case, I've done the following. I have my playlist taking the right half of my screen, the channel rack on the top left, which I have set to have a fixed size so it never automatically resizes, and the mixer at the bottom left. If I double click on a pattern clip with my playlist, it will open up the piano roll window exactly on top of the step sequencer. At any point, if I want something to be bigger, I simply either double click on the tile bar of that window or press enter to make it go full screen. When I'm done and I want to go back to my quote unquote general view, I simply do the same again and I'm back seeing all my windows. Finally, I also have the browser on auto hide which saves me a click every time I want to access it and it gets out of my way automatically so I can maximize the space I'm working with. So secondly, stay organized. That means name and color your stuff. To automatically keep everything consistent regarding naming and coloring, there's a great feature that was relatively recently added to FL Studio 20 which is called Playlist, Instrument, and Audio Tracks. And generally, people tend not to use them enough. Now, there are people to which this workflow doesn't really apply, but I'd say that a good proportion of you should probably use them. This feature allows you to link playlist tracks to a channel in the channel rack and a mixer track. If you rename or recolor either the playlist, channel, or mixer track, the name and color will be updated in all three places, so that really saves time. And the same thing applies when deleting those tracks. The playlist track, channel, and mixer tracks will be deleted. This also allows you to double click on a linked playlist track to open its associated instrument channel, or in the case of audio tracks, select its associated mixer track. So speaking of naming and coloring stuff, here's another tip. If you want to quickly copy the color of a track on another track, you can middle click on the track you want to copy the color from, then press escape to close the rename pop-up. Then you can middle click on the track you want to paste the color to, then press F3 to apply the last used color, which in our case is the other track we wanted to rename earlier. You can then name it accordingly and press enter to confirm once you're done. Although this may all seem like a chore, you will quickly get the hang of it to do it efficiently and I can almost guarantee that it's worth the little time you spent in the sense that you will spend way less time searching for things especially later on when your project approaches the final stages of production. So now, let's move on to using your keyboard efficiently. This is a big one, and it also saves a ton of time the more you learn to use it. Let's start with just a couple of useful keyboard shortcuts. You might know these, but still, if you don't, then you will save tons of time. To use these efficiently, keep your left hand over the left hand side of your keyboard so that you can easily reach most of them at any time. By the way, to use these shortcuts, you most likely need to disable Type It Keyboard to Piano, which allows all letters to be dedicated to shortcuts instead of MIDI input. So the first one, and probably the one I use the most, is Ctrl B. Ctrl B clones the selected elements, and according to the time selection if there is one, it will place it right after it. This is mainly used in the playlist and in the piano roll. The second keyboard shortcut, a rather group of shortcuts, is the single letter shortcuts. Again, in the playlist and piano roll. All these tools at the top of the playlist have associated letters you can press on your keyboard to toggle them. 
This allows you to quickly and dynamically switch tools without needing to move your mouse. So as long as you keep your left hand in the left area of your keyboard, editing in the playlist and piano roll becomes super quick. Finally, regarding the keyboard, there is one more very important thing that will accelerate your workflow a ton. Those are keyboard accelerator keys. If you open almost any context menu inside FL Studio, you will notice that some options have a letter that is underlined. This means that this option can be selected after opening the menu by pressing the corresponding key on your keyboard. So there you go guys. It might take you a little time to get used to these techniques. I guarantee that you will not regret taking the time to practice them as you'll definitely save a lot of time in the long run and you'll be able to put down your ideas even quicker than you could before. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time.